As you will hear from cancer patients and their caregivers, different people have different experiences with side effects of checkpoint inhibitor immunotherapy. These effects are generally different from those caused by chemotherapy or radiation therapy. In many cases, they are not severe and may be short-lived or easy to manage. Less often, side effects can be very severe or even life-threatening. Some people have no or almost no side effects. Many people have common side effects that include flu-like symptoms, rashes, and fatigue the day after their infusion. Still others face extreme fatigue. Less commonly, some people experience autoimmune disorders like thyroid problems. It is very important that anyone receiving immunotherapy let their healthcare team know right away if they develop any side effects. Many patients have fatigue the day after their infusion. My name is Mary Pro. I have adenocarcinoma stage four of the lung. I started my immunotherapy uh, December of 2013. The side effects are minimal. Um, the fatigue is nothing compared to what chemotherapy would be. And I would not hesitate to tell someone to take the advantage of it. I have had exhaustion or fatigue, they call it. But fortunately, I'm not one of those that have had extreme fatigue. I, just the day after I have my infusion, I'm just tired and I lay around. I'm Donna Fernandez and I have stage four lung cancer. I got into um, an immunotherapy clinical trial after um, traditional chemos quit working for me. So I had traditional chemos for about eight months and my tumors kept growing. So then I got into the clinical trial for immunotherapy. I am lucky. I am probably one of the luckiest people with, for me, the worst side effect that I have with um, immunotherapy is a little bit of fatigue on the day that I get my infusion. Slight amount of fatigue the following day. And, but it, if, if there's something I really wanna do, I can do it. I, you just have to pull into your reserves a little bit more. Other patients face extreme fatigue. My name is Carl Pritchard and I'm living with bladder cancer. I had side effects that were predictable mostly. The first one was, they said that I would have extreme fatigue. And when I went back for my second meeting, I said, you didn't say that right. You've got to put more emphasis on the word extreme. Uh, and yes, I had extreme fatigue. That was my major side effect. Later on, I had a couple of smaller side effects that did go away. Uh, I have a side effect today that's continuing, and that's dry mouth. Uh, but other than that, I haven't had any major side effects at all. What I should describe extreme fatigue, I think, and that is that you don't realize, I didn't realize, I was fatigued at all or tired. I felt like I could go out and plow the North 40 without the help of a horse. But by the time I got outside the front door, I was too pooped to do anything but sit down. You, you feel great but it just isn't there. The fatigue is still there, but it's not quite as extreme, but yes, it is there. If I go for a long walk, I will know it. My name is Richard Burton, and I have ocular melanoma. I have really, really bad fatigue. Uh, I had to stop working. Um, it's affected my balance. It's affected my emotions. It's affected my memory, my focus. Just, I'm a completely different person now. In terms of the clinical response, I think we've been happy in that he's beaten the odds that are out there for this kind of therapy. I think 78% of folks with class two ocular melanoma experienced the death within five years. So those were very difficult odds for us to face at first and we were glad to have the option to be in the trial. Know that you're gonna be dealing with not fatigue but debilitating fatigue. You're gonna be dealing with all sorts of issues on top of all the, of having cancer and on top of all the financial issues and all the social issues and family issues because you're, everybody's lives have changed now. But it's, if you have no options, it's easy to do. It, uh, you know, like I said, it's a no brainer in my situation. Well, I think it's important to realize that some of the language you use 
for describing cancer side effects is similar to everyday language. You might talk about having the flu and missing a day of work or being extremely tired and it's not the right language for the kind of side effects you get with cancer. It's like comparing a puddle to the Pacific Ocean and saying they're both bodies of water. I, I don't know that there is a better language to describe what goes on with cancer, but don't diminish that the side effects seem like something that is familiar to you because it's a completely new territory. Some patients have almost no side effects. My name is Jeannie Todd, bladder cancer. My treatment in the past has been um, probably 25 to 30 BCG treatments, uh, two mitomycin treatments, six rounds of cisplatinum czar, which is a platinum-based chemo, and that I failed everything up to that point, so then we went for the immunotherapy option. My immunotherapy response um, was actually quite well. I had no side effects at all. Um, never really even coughed or sneezed, nothing. It was way better than the chemotherapy. A few of the patients we talked to experienced autoimmune reactions, including thyroid problems. When I was first diagnosed, I was as healthy, I thought, as I had ever been in my entire life. So I went to the doctor to, um, because I kept gaining weight and I thought I had thyroid problems. And <clears throat> I didn't have thyroid problems. I was very surprised to learn. No, in fact, I had lung cancer. I got into um, an immunotherapy clinical trial after um, traditional chemos quit working for me. So I had traditional chemos for about eight months and my tumors kept growing. So then I got into the clinical trial for immunotherapy and um, my thyroid quit working. Ironically, <laughs> that thyroid that I thought wasn't working really doesn't work now. My name is Agnes Arcus and my husband was diagnosed with stage four melanoma. I would say after the third round of the Yervoy, Bill was very lethargic, the thyroid was affected. Uh, we did see the doctor, they gave him some prescription and pills and then we had to go for the fourth round. And then Bill asked the doctor, how about if we don't go for the fourth round of Yervoy? How about if we just stay with, go for the PET scan and the MRI? which he did. The scan and the MRI came out clean. He was good. So we were thrilled about all of that. Um, I will say this, our lives are very normal from day one or what the normal would be. We live life the way we normally would. You know, my husband goes out and golf and uh, you know, the kids come over a lot and my husband just retired. So he continued to work another year. Immunotherapy only works for about 30% of patients. For some patients, their tumors don't shrink or disappear, and their disease stays stable. It is important to note that it can take longer for response to be seen with immunotherapy than with other types of treatment. I do still have tumors, um, and I think they're about the same size as when I first um, started getting treatment. So. I may not be considered a success as far as the trial goes because I didn't have significant shrinkage in my tumors, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm a huge success because it's been three and a half years since I joined the trial and I was only supposed to live four months when I was first diagnosed. My response to the chemo, uh, to the immunotherapy, I initially looked like it was just slowly growing, which they expected it to get larger before it got smaller. But it got larger very quickly, and it put other organs in danger. So they had to stop the process, do a rush emergency radiation, and then I went back to get the CAT scan done um, to get it checked up and followed up on, and now they cannot find the tumor. They think I'm one, and I think they said 20,000 that had a delayed response. My name is Maria Kelly, and I'm living with adenoid cystic carcinoma, a salivary gland cancer that had wrapped around my facial nerve. Initially, I went through three surgeries, and um, a couple of weeks after that, I had six weeks of radiation, and because my cancer is a rare cancer, there wasn't any chemotherapy or anything like that available for me at the time. 
I don't know what kind of response I've had yet because I have a very slow grow growing cancer and I receive treatments every three weeks. I get scans every nine weeks. I've only had one set of scans so far and it hasn't been enough time to tell whether or not there's been any response. For me, immunotherapy has not been a bad experience from a side effects perspective but the hope that it offers is huge for me. Um, to be able to finally do something for my cancer in fighting that, you know, in my fight against this cancer, where I've had to sit by the sidelines and wait and watch it progress. Um, this has been a huge uh, sort of lift for me to, to be able to do something. Even if I don't know if it's working yet, I feel like I'm finally doing something.